Welcome back. It's time now for On the Radar, when we ask an investing professional what they're looking at in today's markets. We're back with Dennis Mitchell. He's CEO and CIO, Chief Investment Officer at Starlight Capital. Uh, viewers will know that you're an expert in the real estate uh, sector. Uh, the federal government has recently announced uh, limitations on foreign students uh, entering Canada because of the perception that that, that, uh, that huge influx of foreign students has uh, made uh, housing more difficult to find. Well, uh at a 30,000 foot uh, level, yes, that's true. More students coming in, more demand for housing. But that just exposes another failing where in Canada, the public universities and institutions are unable to partner directly with private interests to provide purpose-built student housing. And so other countries do this. The United States does, the United right. Kingdom does, we don't. And so as a result, yes, any additional students like you know my kids uh, put more demand into the housing market as opposed to sort of having a solution where public institutions, uh, sorry, universities can partner with private interests to build purpose-built rental. And I'll, I'll give you an example. I went to Laurier for my undergrad, and I lived in University Place and University View, which were private apartment buildings right. uh, at the time. Right. 25 years later, uh, they were both owned by Wilfrid Laurier University as first-year residences. Right. That's a huge capital commitment for a university with huge maintenance and, and CapEx expenditures on an annual basis. Far better for them to partner with a private owner of that asset sign a master lease for all the units, and then pass that through to students, earning a toll or a fee on the way through. Way less capital intensive, way more sort of cash flow generative for the universities and alleviates a concern. But my bigger concern with what the, university, what the government has done here, without consulting the institutions of higher education, ironically, is that they've said, we are going to cap the number of foreign students and we're actually gonna roll it back slightly. Well, the problem is, is that most of the universities have now become addicted to foreign students. Yeah, some right? are uh, majority foreign students, I believe. Yeah, I believe nine of uh, nine universities in Ontario alone have more foreign students right. than domestic students. Right. And so I know a number of people will be saying, well, that's wrong. Well, here's the problem. Uh, as a father with four who have, or are either in the post-secondary education system or just exiting, um, the reason why tuition is affordable is because it's subsidized by foreign students who are paying three right. times what domestic students pay. And so unless you want your child's tuition to go up you know, by a factor of two, maybe even three, uh, foreign students are subsidizing the domestic students' education. The problem is, is that universities haven't received any more funding from provinces or federally, yep. and so they've become addicted to this cash flow stream. So we've added more and more students. But here's the real math that people have to take a step back and look at. CMHC has estimated that by 2030, we will require 22 million housing units in Canada. Now, based on the in, the in place stock today and development plans, we are going to have 18.2 million housing units by 2030. So we're already short three and a half million housing units. Rolling back 200 to 300,000, you know, demand for units from foreign students does nothing to address that. What we need to do is we need to incent more development. And I know a lot of people will say, well, you're talking your book. Here are the facts. <laughs> we don't have enough housing for the Canadians who exist today. You know, look forward five years. How many people will be born? How many marriages will dissolve where one household will become two? Right. How many people will go away to school, which would create, you know, one household becomes two or three, depending on how many children you have. You, we need more households now to deal with our current demand, let alone what we will see over the next five or six years. So unless we want the population of Canada to decline or our growth rate to decline, we need more housing. You know, and, and that's part of a bigger symptom. We don't have enough innovation and productivity in this country, right? So we've papered over that by growing the population. So it all becomes a huge mess that this just adds to.